All right, all right. Um, live family waiting for AA. That's what the hold up is. The hold up is me waiting for AA. He said, give him about uh, three more minutes. So, um, but I know I'm starting late. So I just wanted to, um, I don't want y'all to think it be me all the time. You know what I'm saying? Let me wipe this camera. I know y'all be like, what's up with Brother Rich? Uh, Brother Rich be waiting for the guests sometime. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, hit the like button. Hey, hey, give him about uh, well, give him give him a couple of minutes. Where my water at? My small water. He my warm thirsty, y'all. Ah man, yeah, but give him a couple of minutes and we'll be live. What's going on with y'all? What is going on with y'all? Let's get to this commercial real quick for my brother King Simon, and then uh, we're gonna get started with the show. Let's get to this commercial real quick. Uh... The legendary Professor James Small has come to Atlanta, Georgia for two days. April 6th and April 7th. You don't want to miss it. He's doing a public and a private event. Text me right now at 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. The legendary Professor James Smalls, as you've seen him on Hidden Colors and all the rest of the documentaries. Make sure you go to my link tree at linktree forward slash King Simon and Numero Beta. Professor James Smalls in Atlanta, April 6th and April 7th. All right, shout out to Professor James Small. I actually have to call the brother. Um, Want to get him back on the show. So I'm probably give uh, Professor James Small a call this weekend. Probably have him on next week. Yeah, probably have him on again next week. But what's good, what's good with your family? Talk to me while we wait for the brother A.A. Rashid. I'm trying to think if there's any updates. I want to let y'all know um, the cooking video. Me and KT is going to finally do the cooking video. We were supposed to do it this week, but we didn't get a chance to. We are going to do that next week for all the Patreons. Um, shout out to everybody who's a member on the Patreon. Me and KT is going to do a cooking video next week. I hope y'all been following Wayne Chandler's series. He has a show on my Patreon about tapping into your fourth dimensional self. And he's showing the Qigong techniques necessary to tap into your fourth dimensional self. That's what this ascension process is all about, learning that you are a fourth dimensional or a multi-dimensional being instead of just looking at yourself as third dimensional. So um yeah, make sure you're um if you're a member or if you're not, you might want to check out um uh, you might want to check it out. Wayne Chandler. Somebody said so many big things ahead, Club 363. Yeah, definitely. So many big things ahead. Yeah, got some amazing ideas. Can't wait for that. Definitely can't wait for that. Uh, speak on the conscious Grammys. Oh, ooh, um, uh, Billy, yeah, Billy's having the awards. Uh, you know, Billy, this is the second time he's doing it. So, shout out to Billy. Um, he does it down in Florida. You know what I'm saying? My Patreon is, um, you go to Patreon and then you just type in my name, Black Magic 363. And, um, you have to subscribe, of course, but that's the um, page, Black Magic uh, 363 on patreon you know what i'm saying but uh yeah what else uh i hope i sent that let me tell a ask a what's his email again hold up y'all oh dr phil text me too i gotta res i gotta listen to that um hold up y'all Okay, yeah, I just want to want to make sure I sent um the link to the right email with AA. Well, uh, just to give you a heads up, tonight we got AA. Tomorrow we got um the sister Flabrun. How many of y'all are familiar with Flabrun? The sister Flabrun, she's like uh the female Delbert Blair, Doctor Delbert Blair. You know what I'm saying? Oh, somebody said, um, but yeah, she's going to be, hold on real quick. Somebody, New Diamond said, I met the love of my life on your channel. Thank you so much. But wow, that's dope. Oh, shit. That's dope. Where well, you met him at the awards, um, New Diamond? You, you met him at, um, where well, you met him at the awards last year? Yeah, but yeah, Flabrun is going to be on tomorrow at, um, at nine o'clock. We're going to talk, be talking about the, uh, Lyrians. You know, there's different races of extraterrestrials, and 
I've never talked to about Delirians before sp specifically. I'm, I've mentioned it to Billy and to see how much he know about it, but I never like had a whole show dedicated to it. So it's going to be a real good show tomorrow. Make sure you're tuning. Oh, um, hold up. Uh, where's the sister at? Oh, New Diamond says she meant the love of her life. This is dope, yo. Y'all hear this? New, I met the sister at the um uh Forbidden Knowledge Awards. She's um she's always in the chat, you know, supporting. She says she meant the love of her life in the chat. Damn, it's going down in the chat like that. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's powerful. That's magic. That's magic. That is truly magic. Yeah, yeah. Sanchi said, yeah, it'd be going down. Yeah, it'd be going down in the chat. Yeah, uh, it'd be going it'd it be going down in the chat. I see. It'd be going down in the chat, but that's dope. Yeah, in the YouTube chat, so yeah, in the YouTube chat, that's dope. So I'm glad. Um, I'm glad that you was able to make a connection on a conscious platform and find somebody that vibes on the same frequency as you or a similar frequency. I mean that is that is beautiful. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, uh, thank you so much. This community is amazing. Yes, yeah, what you make of it, you know, it's what you make of it. There's so much help uh, out there, and there's so much, you know, divine love out there in this community. We just got to tap into that frequency. Uh, somebody said, Holy Ghost, three fallen angel. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, fallen angel. Cam was spitting on that one. I mean, he was spitting. How many of y'all heard? Um, how many of y'all heard Holy Ghost three? Cam was spitting on Fallen Angel big time. Yeah, you know, but um, in terms of people connecting in the chat, like I told y'all when I when I had the um the uh the I'm the party I just had, the room I mean it was packed with women. It was packed with women. The women are out here, and they like yo we out here, and I'm like damn. Pack with women, beautiful sisters too. You know what I'm saying? So, brothers, the ladies is out here. The ladies is definitely out here. Um, yeah, the ladies is definitely out here. So, shout out to all the ladies that came through. Uh, somebody said I bought it, but the download didn't work. They didn't. Nobody sent you an email. The um, the we transfer email. Why don't you email me? Cause you, if you bought it, you should um, you should have got the we transfer email. I was sending them out, and um, you, you you're supposed to get the instrumental album, and and the um you know behind the scenes the making of the album. That's what's up. Serious, can you be quiet? Thank you, baby. But um, yeah. So email me right there. Email me right there, and um, I'll see what's up. You know. Yeah, it's definitely an amazing album. We, we, you know, um, we put our work in on this one. You know, we had to travel back and forth from New York to Atlanta. Uh, you know, but we made it happen. Somebody said, yeah, but it didn't give me the actual album. Yeah, you got to email me then, BC. It didn't give you the actual. You got to email me. I got to see what's going on. Yeah, we gonna. Um, I'm gonna do the whole party thing. I'm gonna. I'm. I probably might do that. Um. I got a couple of things in mind. I don't want to speak on too soon, but as far as the party, uh, I would say probably May, maybe May. Um, maybe May, maybe May. What's the link to the album? Just go to Apple Music. You just go to Apple Music, and you could listen to it on Apple Music. Shout out to the sister Karain, sister Karain from New York, holding it down. You know, shout out to the sister Karen always doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, what's up? What's up with you, Karen? What's going on with you, Karen? Um, waiting just we just waiting for AA to come in the building. You know, say a lot of people saying they're gonna make it to the next one. I hope you do. I hope you do. The next one's gonna def definitely gonna be popping. It's gonna be better than even better than the first one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when is the retreat or group vacation? I, d I don't know. I don't know. That one is a little more difficult to pull off. That's um, that's in my mind too, in terms of um, making it, make it happen. 
making it happen. But um, that one, um, I got to, you know, do some research on that in terms of uh, what I wanted to do with um, Iceland and all of that. You know, that's a little trip. Here's uh, the brother AA. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep you all I'm going to keep you all updated with that. Like there's a couple of things I want to tap into this year. You know, the whole uh, the party thing, the Club 363, the retreat. Um, I got a big event coming up. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to keep you all in the loop, in the loop with. So just, you know, thanks for um, I'm going to get a separate email. So everybody and put everybody on like a special list of to be notified. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, that's that. That's that, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're waiting for my let my brother AA get everything together. You know what I'm saying? And we could we gonna get started. Hey, hey, you good, my brother? Man, I'm a legend. I'm a whole legend. I think so. <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. You remember that? <laughs> the little engine that oh, yeah. Good? The low engine that could, yeah. The low engine that could, but um, yeah, AA's in LA. He he been holding it down on the West Coast. He started out here on the East Coast, but he's now he's on the West Coast holding it down. Uh, where will you be dropping more info on the trip? Um, I'll, I'll be dropping it here as soon as I find out about it. I'm gonna let everybody know here. But like I said, that one, you know, it may take me a little while to get that one together. I'm not sure. But as soon as I find out, I make significant progress with that. I'm going to let y'all know. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I find out, I'm going uh, to I'm gonna let y'all know. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, uh, hold up. Okay. Yeah, hey, just let me know when you're ready. I'm just kicking in with the people. Just let me know when you are, uh, when you're ready to rock and roll. They can hear us? Yeah, 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 yeah. We live right now. Good. Good. Yeah, I was just, Good. I'm just kicking, giving, giving the people some updates. Uh, let them know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You got the best crowd. Pre appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Yo, hey, check this out. So a sister just said, a sister just said that she met the love of her life in in my chat, in the chat on this channel. That's dope. Fire. That's fire. You know what I mean? You know that's what we used to do at LIU. Uh, it's families that still is together. Oh yeah, based off of coming to those lectures. You know yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of reason to come come to the lectures. I mean, you meet you meet like minds, family. You never know who you might meet. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it is what it is. Somebody said who in Charlotte? Who in Charlotte? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, family. I'm not sure. But let me uh hold up. Let me make this bigger. Hey, hey, I know you got an amazing presentation for the people. Um, yeah. AA is very scholar. Uh, AA, AA is um the perfect mixture of scholarship and with with with, with the hood mixed in with in, in it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the brother, the bro not no more, not no more. <laughs> he said not no more. Man, AA hey, hey, man, you Brooklyn all well, day, AA. Hey, hey. You know, it's a shame though that people have equated Brooklyn with the hood when in fact, you know, it's just a county of kings and yeah. it's just a landmass that we're gonna talk about tonight and landmass in period, you know, about mm. about where you are. It's it's not it's not it's sometimes you know they say it ain't it ain't it ain't where you from, it's where you at. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometime is where you from will determine where you go, you mm -hmm. know? So, mm -hmm. you know, all of us know this, who tried to strive for something, where you from, you, you are the ingredient of where you from. You are the magnetic field of where you're from. So right. you oftentimes can get so absorbed in the magnetic field of where you from that you don't even know that you could go someplace place else and be something you know that's facts and then people you like look at you uh harlem harlem is um the cornerstone of the african-american renaissance in the uh in the in the in the in, the, in, the, in, the, in you know to, to going into the 19th 20th century like that was the epicenter and the excellence of the people is still there however 
I don't know if you can still do your same play in Harlem. You might have to have left Harlem to take the field of what you learned mm. and the gospel of what you have to offer abroad. Mm. Cause if mm -hmm. you just keep it there, you'll get consumed by your environment. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. No facts. It's, it's very easy to, to feel unappreciated in a space where everybody is th the same. You know what I'm saying? For real. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, what you dealing with tonight? The name I said so so what happened, family, is I seen the AA. Uh he just put up a simple post, very simple on Instagram. It said water and magnets, and he had a picture of the moon. And it just it just you know, you some things just resonate with you. It just resonated with me. I left a comment and uh AA had hollered at me. I was like, man, let's let's go in. I because I know what AA brings to the table. So I'm like, you know, that that whatever you whatever you put up, it whatever was on your mind, you know, we non-local somehow. Well, I just want to give context to that. Yeah. I, I um I I am a water sign, mm. um, an exalted water sign, mm. you know. For the astrologers, listen, I don't know if I said that right, <laughs> but I feel <laughs> like I'm 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 different as a water sign because I got five placements in my sign under Scorpio. So a lot of what I have to offer to humanity at, at large comes from my propitious alignment upon my birth, you know? So mm. because of, you know, people in our, in our, in our contemporaries, uh, brothers like Raku and you remember uh, Will Bravum? These brothers mm. were instructing us um, years ago about cartography and about it ain't where you from, it's where you at. But it's also like, again, it ain't where you at, it's where you from, right? Mm. So to give further context, when I put the post up and my wateriness as a water mm. sign, I mm. often time find uh, a great relief in the need to express myself. However, as a Scorpio, I'm only allowed to express myself in um, the realm of spiritual dialogue or nebulous words or terms that may very well be beyond, be, beyond comprehension of common folks. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't seek to always be understood because I've learned over time that that's really not a reality. You'll live your mm. entire life thinking mm. that you could be understood and you won't. So I, I I felt like if I put up a post and I feel like my sentiments should be absorbed and felt the pulse of what I what I put up should be felt in real time. As I become more mature, I found that, you know, that the internet is not necessarily your friend. If because I'm really from a, a, a school of thought where when I was a young person, you was looked at as being a fool or somebody that's a simple minded, moronic person for you to speak everything that's on your mind. Right, right. So now I see you know the irony of this i seen someone put up a uh, very interesting dialogue regarding the fact that when you was young if you had a diary and somebody went and found your diary and started reading your diary you would be upset but now that we had the internet we are putting our diary uh, things that we would put aside of our diary, we're putting it online for others to read it and get mad if they don't read it. <laughs> so I said, that's an interesting, wow, good one. So I go, I, I had an observation that if I could see the post and I could see the date of the post, I bet the, the date of the post corresponds astrologically to my experience that I was having in my location of where I was at. So I, what I was noticing, I was noticing because I was taking a pulse of my environment and I feel because of my propitious 
placement astrologically, I think that I'm empathic in a sense and can feel emotions. And I could also, without not knowing it, I could also express and expose my emotions if they unbalanced. So it's like a dual edge. So I seen while traveling and navigating through the streets in the, the metropolis, I seen it was a particular energy of, it was almost like a dangerous foolhardiness. And it was an energy that I was familiar with when I was little. It would be this energy that if I say this to somebody to understand, be like, why is y'all playing with me? Why everybody playing so much, right? And that was kind of the energy. I was like, but in my maturity or the desire to be mature, I was like, you know what? This is this humans operating out of the magnetic field. And they're expressing the waters which in which they are composed and they do it through their behaviors. And along my journey of becoming more mature, you have to not take things personal. You cannot take human behavior personal. You have to take it as uh, instructive, you know? It has to be mm -hmm. something that you appreciate when you see it because the lack thereof will keep you in the blind. You might be just operating solely off of your own onus, your own I idea so to speak so you when you hit me and called me it was like yo actually you had commented on the post and i was like that was an encouraging moment for me because i'm like i enjoy when people that i actually know get something like i'm not really enthused by people that i don't know directly in a direct experience I, I enjoy the interactions, whatever, on the internet or whatever, but if I see somebody that actually know me and they comment or make a, you know, something kind or whatever, I'm like, man, that's the purpose of what I guess we do this for, you know? So upon me and you having a conversation, you was like, that'd be an awesome and amazing show, you know? Mm -hmm. So... I apologize. You did tell me that you would um, have liked me to present some slides. However, Rich, I'm in a situation right now that I'm transitioning my um, my business model. Um, I'm kind of like concentrating more on visual art in my books. For years, I was... Um, a significant portion of my, you know, how I was able to eat and subsist was based off of me um, designing and presenting my designs on clothing. So now I'm just doing that just for people who know about what I've done. And if they want something, they can pre-order it or whatever, like, and do it custom as opposed to me investing all of my time and effort into one design and put money into it and just sitting up and seeing that people buy it. So transitioning into this space where I'm at now, I, I find that uh, uh, my time has been invested in like making a reality. And again, in your, in your terms, I know you, you love the word manifesting because you are a manifester. And I see you manifest over over several years and i say to you i say your manifesting abilities are amazing you heard and i see uh your manifesting ability coupled with the manifesting ability uh do me a favor once favor rich because yeah. i'm not i'm smart but i'm still affected by my sentient environment if you could mute your mic you heard? Okay. Yeah. Because I'm trying to formulate thoughts and I can't even do it. All right. Thank you, King. So I say to you, I appreciate you for stimulating that thought process, that thought process that you inaugurated in, our, in that conversation regarding magnets, magnetic fields, 
and manifestation was very important. So I appreciate you. And that's why we're here to just give context to the listener. You know, I um, I don't truly endeavor to oftentimes do as many um, uh, of these type of uh, presentations how we used to. If I do, it's always within the company of people who um, who are friends to me and friends to my friends and friends to my family. I don't like to spread myself out willy nilly with this anybody that just in, interview anybody. I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? That's not the energy here. So I'm not trying to uh, impose a doctrine on anyone. I'm just here to share my observations regarding what I saw that night when I seen the behaviors and how I coupled it with the magnetic field. So very interesting. We are in the uh, month of Ramadan. Shout out to the Muslims who are uh, participants, even the Muslims who are adjacent to Islam. I know a lot of people are fans of Islam because Islam has uh, gained some sense of popular culture on it. So when I was a kid, uh, nobody wanted to understand what Ahmed means or, <laughs> or wanted to even fathom for one moment the thought of fasting on anything. But now this is a blessed time and people are participants in the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the dialogue as well as the cultural iconography. So interesting that we're speaking about magnetic fields and we are in a time period right now where humans are celebrating the magnetic field among and around them by during the solar period when the sun is out humans are fasting and now very interesting when they do treat themselves and when they do offer themselves the ability to eat is during the night time when the sun goes down so as a symbol literist as someone who is always trying to understand who i am based off the symbol literacy that i have been presented presented with i find that the nighttime as the gift when you can eat is a ancient and very subconscious method of venerating the the lunar cycle as well as the the role that the female plays on humanity and in humanity's re reality you could bounce back in rich with the sound so it don't sound like i'm just talking to myself when i can hear because I, <laughs> I'm sitting like this. It was just the whatever was the background sound where you was at. It was just a little bit. I was trying to get my gears going and I was registered. My brain was registering the sounds of whatever was going. But, you know, you can hit me with the NOI shit, man. Hit me with the, oh, uh, that's right, brother. Every now and then. You know what I mean? Teach. Keep me motivated. Teach. That's right. There you go. There you go. Motivate your brother. That's Teach. What I'm saying. Right. So I say, the most uh, advanced technology on the actual planet, far beyond anything that artificial intelligence can present, is the phenomenal ability of women, in particular, women of color. And then let me go, because I don't want nobody to get mad at me because I say women of color. <laughs> black women on the color blackness has an extreme role in the ability to make things manifest. And one of the things that is the most coveted tool of hers has always and will forever be the magnetic field of the planet. And you see envisaged mm. in her symbolism 
how much she covets and protects the magnetic field because in protecting the magnetic field on the planet, she also can protect humanity. So there's some parts of humanity that have been negatively affected by a negative experience with the magnetic field. And when I tell you about the magnetic field, I'm speaking to people who endeavor to try to get themselves out of the religious dialogue sounding uh, uninformed, um, speaking from a nationalist or socialized framework of blackness that blinds you from the scientific import of your surroundings. So I would remind you, I would like to remind you that everyone participating in this dialogue by listening or whatever, you never asked to come here. You were born here and you were born and birthed under strange, what you might call <laughs> interesting circumstances. Your parents, were melding with their utilities, with their tools uh, that they've been bequeathed by humanity. They were mixing their magnets together. Mm. They were mixing their magnets together um, on the liquid side. They were mixing their magnets together, sentimentality. And then upon birth, you were a part of the magnetic field and you are evidence that the magnetic field is real. The birth of a child, the child can basically know nothing except for just the, you know, they say that we know everything when you're a baby, you just don't have the faculties to express it. But the thing that you most know and the thing that you're most noted for is your fearlessness in the presence of water. Uh, many people are um, are aware of this, that there is a birthing process where the, the queens, the sisters, they're allowed to have and can have babies underwater. And it, they say it's one of the most stress-free and trauma-free environments for birthing experiences. And then you can find um, people who are training babies to swim. They just throwing the baby inside of pools and the babies just automatically swim. They don't get scared within the water because they have been trained in the method and the modality of the magnetic field. So very interesting. You ask a nursing mother who goes to work every day if the magnetic field is real and ask the babysitter if the magnetic field is real and the baby can ascertain or understand or know that the mother is very close or in route home and will cry or make uh, or gesticulate to the world audibly that it desires the reciprocal expression and the currency of the magnetic field and that respect becomes the nurturing metals and metallic agents that are encoded in nutrients like spark plugs. She gives the baby life force energy through milk. Thus the baby has a deep connection with her based off of the fact that it knows where its food is at and that the baby will start crying and that the lactating mother she know this is a fact ask women who breastfeed they'll start lactating as they get closer and closer to the child that's right? facts that's facts so now you can also read the magnetic field when you look at the symbols and one of the um most beautiful expressions of ma'at or Isis, uh, us, us, excuse me, is the, um, is the expansion 
of the wings. You ever seen the goddess expanding the wings? And then you'll see another envisaged image of one wing is this way and another wing is like this. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is it about the feathers and wings and humans? Humans know a lot about magnetic fields. They learn where to establish civilization based off of acknowledging and monitoring the behavior of creatures around them. And one of the most interesting things is that feather, which is equated with truth. If you know anything about feathers independently, feathers have magnetic principles involved with them. A feather can respond when rubbed on something and create frictional force and the feather can actually have a charge of a magnet associated with it. So uh, feathers, when you see the mother with wings, those are the wings that she uses to protect her child from the magnetic fields. And the fields of the magnets that stand to harm humanity. So now, uninformed nationalism without African spirituality will have you thinking that your blackness is enough under the sun. Anywhere you go under the sun, your melanin is automatically transforming uh, into some form of brilliance or genius. Okay. Let me remind you that crows have melanin and so do roaches. It's going to require some more things for you to extrapolate divine intelligence and place it into parameters that you can actually utilize. And one of those things is acknowledgement of the magnetic field. You must be able to acknowledge the magnetic field. How do you know where magnetic fields exist independent of you see many of us spiritually we just think that some people just tell you you could just go i call it the placebo people they you just give them anything anything that's cultural and they say oh i can feel it they say oh i can feel that i just felt what you said it's spiritual placebo right so you think inherently you just want to say yes because other people are there and you want to sound down i get it you know, that's a whole nother psychological conversation. But we learn about the magnetic field through divine observation. Our ancestors left us elaborate images of these eyes that have defied time, the Uje. They have defied time. Cultural morphology have turned, changed that eye into the eye of providence, and now we got it on dollars. That is one of the greatest symbols ever is the image of to know is the eye. African spirituality, shout out to Brother Oba, offers us the empowerment given to us by our ancestors by doing what? Giving us the, the peep. Let us peep game. See it. So one of the greatest tools of survival is acknowledging the magnetic field and knowing the power of your eyes as your eyes are directly connected to your brain. You can control your magnetic field if you but only knew how to use your eyes half the time. Sometimes your nose, your eyes and your nose is, co is connected. They very they're not that far from one another. Fuck around. You can smell, excuse my language. The uh, elder told me to stop cursing so everybody can hear what I'm saying. Redact that from the statement. The universe is hearing me. I don't want to cuss. But Lord forbid, if you could smell your eyes, what would you, what would you, what would you say? Huh. Right? 
So I go and I look and I, I like to use my eyes and I go and I look at National Geographic because I want to learn about humans. Humans, though, have this cortex where over several millennia, millions of years, they have created this elaborate ability to conceal their thoughts and motivations with appearances. Whereas observing nature, you will find out more about your motivations to survive than asking another human what's on their mind. Because they're going to mislead you and take you someplace else. Some part of their survival complex is if they don't see an affinity or, or, or an immediate result of interaction, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of uh, subterfuge. Okay. So now I'm noticing when I look at the National Geographic and then I compare National Geographic with my overview of many of the major myths and themes of ancient time. We are imparted some of our greatest truths by observe, observation of animals, life forms, and the things that they do and participate in as they seek to survive. And just as of recent, I saw something very interesting. It was like a bird that appears to be like it was a, a skinny pelican. And there was this fish. And this pelican, I know loves fish. But this particular bird saw this fish in shallow water and seen that the fish was stranded. And so the bird picked the fish up by its tail, moved it, and tried to take it back to deeper water so it could survive. So I, right then and there, I said, hmm. I said, yeah. what does that mean? I said, does that mean that that bird is kind, considerate, and loves fish? Absolutely not. The bird is a master of knowing when things are in and out of season. You see? The bird commiserates around fruits. It looks at, it has a different ability to look at the color spectrum and can tell when something is out of season. And if the bird is subsisting off of sea creatures, then the bird has an affinity towards the water and communicates directly to the water via a magnetic field, knowing when in fact the meal is done, so to speak. So what was the bird doing? Was the bird being kind and nice to the fish? They two different species. The birds are not kind, neither, nor are humans. And the universe is consistently trying to destroy you. And the brilliance of consciousness and civilization comes from the ability, your human ability, to, to circumvent all of the aggressive onslaught of what nature has in store for you, for real. So without genius, you can't live anywhere. I dare you, I dare you to go outside and try to be, live off the land and try to be homeless in Chicago around January. I promise you, try it in Buffalo, try it in New York City, uh, expose yourself to those elements and you will die. Mm. So, 
we know magnetic fields and humans operate with them, but then the animal world does so as well. So now how does this come into the realm in the form of when we speak of manifestation? A lot of times when people say, I want to magnetize things towards me, they don't, they don't establish things to propel themselves off of. You just can't say, I want to, I want to actualize and manifest and to bring into being this list of things that I want. It's going to take some people, maybe your kids might inherit it. Maybe you, you might get it. It might not come on time the way you, you, you want it to come on time unless you identify the magnetic field and relinquish yourself from this task. Humans think that they could watch trees grow. You'll, you'll waste your whole life and you, you go ahead and put your ear to a tree un, unaided by any electrical device and try to hear the sound of a tree growing. It's, you're not going to do that. So it stands to say that there are some realities that surround you that you can access intelligence by observing the natural uh what i call the uh natural expression so now they got this new i'm going to digress a little bit they got you know i usually i usually make amenities to participate in culture popular culture i'm an artist i like art you know um the vocation of uh making funny is cool you know satire is a tool it can be a device to take over the world you know the pilgrim have used it effectively and i see they have this new tv or i guess is a series or a movie talk about something of the magical negro right and yeah, i, I, heard, I think comedy. that's a movie i think that's yeah, a movie. it's a movie yeah and rarely do i really speak on uh popular culture kind of stuff because i'll be like you know i'm living in a real life man i'm trying to impart a lot of stuff i don't got time to sit up and talk about people and about current events i let the little homies the little niggas do that talk about other people all day you know so i said i was kind of offended by the course of the narrative because they're missing the mark. And this is the lack of knowledge that humans present themselves with not knowing the truly essential components of survival is knowing your magnetic field and where the magnetic fields are and how you're affected by these magnetic fields. And one of the most offensive magnetic fields that humanity has ever had in uh the the um exposure to has been the magnetic field emitted from the caucasian race no disrespect to my pilgrims that that know me you buy the books you the homie you know love is love for real but the world would be doing way better if white folks was able to be friendly to themselves because the whole world is suffering as they mimic the white boy go back and forth and talk smack and big smack and compete amongst himself to his own people. Always talk about all the violence that we have committed against each other. Let me tell you something. The pilgrim have destroyed himself more than any body in any culture black or brown could do to their own they in fact make historical references and huge world war it's almost like their brand homie you heard and i tie this into the magnetic field is because they magnetic field in which they derive you can't say it was corrupted by anything. You got to say it lacked something. They are products 
of the locality in which the elemental forces which congealed and created the infrastructural mandates to allow the first breath to enter into that initial body and all of the elements and the surrounding things that occurred, right? The magnetic field is missing in his cultural iconography. He does not have a origin in culturally acknowledging the magnetic field until he gets into science, modern science. Well, we had to suffer under his lack of knowledge and lack of knowing about the magnetic field. And we all have been besmirched in some sense or touched or affected negatively by his inability to interact cohesively amongst himself because he does not have the architectural blueprints nowhere and no cultural iconography, no ancient books whatsoever, and no monuments to profess a knowledge of the magnetic field. He don't know. Where are the deities connected to his cultural iconography and his knowledge as that pertains to civility and maintenance of the human species dynamic is lacking. And now the world suffers from that. And now it comes under the form of this. This is how you see the suffering, right? Here you go. You were forged, many of us, you and I, forged, developed, and forced in many respects to subsist in the presence of concrete and strange architectural mandates dealing with 90 degree angles and stuff like that. Upon birth, they presently, they don't burn incense, myrrh, frankincense, or bring gold to your birthing process. But yet, morphogenically, but through morphology, excuse me, we have this inserted in the Jesus motif. This non-existent pilgrim who never existed, but you let you tell it, let not you, homie, the, the you know the people peripheral people the religious blacks you know that their nationality and their nationalism have to be connected to honoring Jesus. they got to make jesus black whatever but in your desire to make jesus black you don't have the birthing process in the same form that you have with your own so there wasn't no frankincense and myrrh to announce the presence of your arrival. So thus your magnetic field is thrown off. They giving the babies vitamin K to, uh, in the eyes and um, silver. What's the silver? Something else. They just wilding the people up, man, on that level. Because somebody doesn't have the magnetic field encoded in their cultural iconography. They only got it through science and through peripheral science. Okay, so no disrespect to nobody, but each of us racially are direct correlates to the magnetic field surrounding our indigenous birthplaces. Your, your infrastructure, your color, your infrastructure, your ability to access pertinent or significant information, quantify it in the form of civilization and cultures predicated on where you are at indigenously on the globe. We got very significant, very significant locations, the this, this people, this people all over the planet, and we left remnants of the proof that we was over there all over the planet. Right. So one of the ways that we knew where the best location is in the wilderness of North America 
is we brought ancient practices of being able to observe the locations where civilizations culminate. They usually culminate around bodies of water, back to water. So the majority of the most significant deities that we presently are uh, aware of, they are creatures that occupy bodies of water and subsist from that environment. Now, who is the who is the deity? Uh, you can ask the chat. What is the most prevalent deific figure for you mentally that's directly related to the mother? In fact, let's go the the midwife. Who's the midwife deity? All right, y'all. Let me see if somebody put it in the chat. Midwife deity, y'all. It starts with a T. And they've been using her name. They've been using her name to make religious books. Now you got a book called a Torah. And you don't even know where the term Tor and the Torah and all that come from. You equating it to men and you think God writes books. Niggas are crazy. Yes, huh? yeah. Ta Earth. Ta Earth. Okay. Yep. And as a water deity, let's make another example. I seen this. I seen Ta Earth because she's the midwife. I seen. Ta Earth, let me give you two instances of what you see them do. They very highly covetous and love their children more than anything. A alligator, crocodile, alligator, all of the niggas is the same, went to go eat one of her young, and all of the hippopotamus rampaged and went in on all the alligators because of that it was a retributive act they had to get some get back about theirs that's how they that's how they is that's how they operate and one of the things that they do also to to disorient their enemy is that they create whirlpools and they're so dense and so heavy that on each of their feet, they have four nails or four, four what would be called phalanges. And I think the universe speaks and teaches us through observation and how apropos for her with her four on fours to be the emblem of the galactic center, which is 4.4, .4, shout out to Blue Pill, 44, 4.4. .4, uh, light years away from the planet, take four point four, four million light years, whatever to get from the galactic center to us, right? Boom. And then I seen an instance where a gazelle had unfortunately, a young one, had unfortunately fell into the watery area or the swamp like area where the hippopotamus resides and just like the bird with the fish in this instance the hippopotamus lifted the gazelle out of the mud and freed it so that it would not succumb and die in the waters is that not an indication of the divine science of the magnetic field not only is the hippopotamus aware of the fact that a gazelle in the water over here is going to bring the enemies to her and her children over there. Let me free it. Then it's too young and it's not a transgressor nor is it an enemy to them. So it's not delightful to and delicious to devour. You see? So now when you go look back at ancient literature, you can get this book 
shout out to my brother. I'm going to I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to Chicago in the first week of April. I'm coming to Chicago. I'm re-releasing a vinyl album. I did the art over again. Here's the album. This is one of the first albums I ever produced, Rich. You know you're a musician. I produced this. And it's executively produced by myself and the queen, Tiffany Kelly, AKA Cindian. And this is the premiere album where we were both demonstrating uh, 12, 10 years ago, I wanna say. It has to be over 10 years. This is like a 10 year anniversary. It has to actually be over 10 years. We were demonstrating our ability to hear the kind of music that we wanted to hear. So I'm coming to Chicago and I'm bringing the new edition of that album. Thank you, brother. And the music is amazing, man. It's terrific music and it's it's timeless. And we were doing something that I will call complex minimalism. We were doing some complex stuff with a minimal amount of equipment, which is nothing short of genius. And it's one of the most, um, the greatest contributions I feel that I've ever done, besides teaching and running my mouth, has been some music that will last and be here when I'm gone. And I I, I find myself at 49 years old, Rich. I I don't want to sound like a naive person to say, I wish I knew what I knew now back then, because it all all adds up. Um, I think about the the uh death far more often nowadays than i ever did ever before king wow and not in a negative way this in a way that i'm like am i leaving this planet with uh inundating it with enough information for the people who deal and, and know what we're doing to feel confident about their experience here how can I improve the quality of my life if I can't improve the quality of people who come after me, knowing that my life would never end, you know? My physical presence may dissipate. and You might see change on the physical level, but I think one of the greatest goals of the human is to do what? Is to leave something behind. So we come into Chicago, and I'm mentioning this because I'm doing a pop up with my brother Yoel at his bookstore, Underground Bookstore. Shout out to the Underground Railroad. You remember that? Uh, <laughs> Magic 363. Remember yeah. that? Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now we still got the Underground play going on. Shout out to brother Yoel. That's one of my uh, elders in Chicago and one of the best bookstores in the. Eastern Hemisphere, your Western Hemisphere, but the East on the East Coast is in Chicago at Underground Bookstore. And I'm going to be providing people with the information and the, the time periods in which we're going to be there. And he has this amazing collection of books and one in particular. And I, I got to I got to do this because I don't want to go against my uh, shout out to uh, the brother. Uh, uh, 19 keys. I got an opportunity to say some great stuff on, on his show. And I spoke about the sharing of technology among our people and our technology in this environment, obviously in many respects is the information that we call consciousness, but, uh, I'm, 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 I don't want to just be pilfering and just be sit, sitting up running my mouth telling people about things that are of a spiritual nature so they could just take them and weaponize the information. So some stuff is not for everybody. Some stuff you just can't just overtly just say on a spiritual realm um, and talk it to spirituality around, among people who are not initiated in the, in the thoughts that we speak about. My teachers have the audacity to say things like, um, like one of the reasons without without with all due respect without nobody feeling no kind of way my teachers told me and i tested this and i seen this and i went and and i looked 
And my teacher said years ago that one of the things that's dangerous to the planet is when estrogen leaves the planet gravitationally and goes to space, bro. So if you say that, wow, and and women say what I ain't supposed to be a, a astronaut, right? <laughs> and you go, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I get it. But meanwhile, you look in biblical and all the religions, they they have a special focus and they demonize her water and her magnet whenever she experiences it. They say in the Bible, you're not supposed to sit in the same chair a woman sat in because it will affect your magnetic field and take you away from God. It would make it where your prayers to God don't even work. Do you hear the, the religious um, untested science and the dogma and the wild world of sports in that statement? You heard? <laughs> it's amazing what humans will believe in and what they participate in. But the magnetic field that she possesses, we all come out of that magnetic field. They say that when women menstruate, they say that their percentage of dialogue and they speak eloquently during that time and are far more verbal and process thoughts at a different pace. This tells you something about blood, doesn't it? Huh? Damn doesn't sure it does. tell you about the magnetic field and how important it is? Yeah. And now, how can we how can we live in a world that says that by the blood of Jesus are all things cleansed, but not the blood of your mama? That's crazy, son. You heard? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. That's crazy. It's insane, in fact. So I go, I go back to the magnetic field. When we get to Chicago, my and the technology that we share, uh, let me go back on my Bobby Hibbert. Let me go back to my point. Shout out to Bobby, right? You know, we go all the way out there. They got to bring it back home, right? I say, I want y'all to come out, and I hope that brother has, I'm going to tell him to hold me a copy. But the book, I know the book is upwards of five to six hundred, maybe a thousand dollars. But I'm going to get me a copy, and I think everybody should have it. It's called The Greatest Story Never Told by Lana Contrell. I first heard about this book from Reverend Valentine. Reverend Valentine has been telling us about the magnetic field for over 35 to 40 years. Has been telling us about the importance of the African spiritual and the spiritual dialogue that has to be had simultaneously and beside the nationalistic one as well. How can you be a nationalist and you say you your point of reference and this, this thing here belongs to me and you don't have a cosmology totally uh, infused with all of your tools required for you to acknowledge and understand the magnetic field. The Christian knows it. The evidence of them knowing about magnetic fields is imprinted in the narrative all throughout. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, how did Noah know that the storm was over or that there was land on the planet? He had birds on it but they say he had two of everything one of the birds ain't come back you heard you remember that and then one bird yep. came back one bird came back with an olive meaning that the you follow the 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 edicts and you follow the observed behavior of the environment to restore the magnetic field to understand its import another thing Biblically, in the Book of Kings, to my Masonic brothers, 
they speak of the the great artificers of the the spiritual home for deity the house made for god was built by what with with tools that could not be heard while the building was being built where did they get that from that sounds like some african spiritual practices when the secret society members of the african spiritual tribes and the the leaders of the tribe when everyone else has to go rest at night go to sleep go lay your ass down they're up building amazing things like bridges of cross bodies of water that would be dangerous to you and i that would present danger and that would present um a series of uh obstacles in the darkest of night they're up constructing a bridge that's made with nothing metal at all just from the material inside of their environment we got se several instances where our environment dictates our ability to manifest and this is why city complexes and culturally are uh, when you go to certain cultures they when you go to india they have a uh, vastu vistu or vastu uh, architectural building it's almost the same thing as the feng shui of our uh, of our uh, uh, asian brothers and then very interesting motif you find in east africa you find around the 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 uh, church complexes or the rituals that you'll find the women will in particular will have umbrellas and it's not even raining but they will be utilizing umbrellas in the form of a spiritual utility this is something to deal with the magnetic field there's some things that you can request of this world but the sun will impede the progress of that thing in which you ask for. Islamically, very interesting, during the lunar cycle that Ramadan is follows, the last 10 days of Ramadan, one of those days is called the Laylatul Qadri, the night of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers any prayer that the muslim makes but this is the funny thing or the interesting thing about islamic prayer that it gives you indication and teaches you the how to perform the request of things that you desire and you do that the first course of action to restore or maintain a magnetic field is what before you pray, what do you have to do before you pray? You have to go to the waters. You have to perform ablution. And ablution alone is not enough. They got something called a gusul. Ask the Muslims what a gusul is. No gusul without gusul, without stinger. Without wudu, you have no prayer. The prayer don't even count. Stinja, for those who don't know, a lot of people, you walking around, you walking around asking the universe to treat you a certain kind of way, and you don't wipe your ass using water. You running around skid marked out. You skid marking asking the universe to present you <laughs> with blessings but you got the skin marks homie for real oh, like man. that oh, so man. how you how you gonna access anything like that with that so now culturally how do you get into magnetic fields there's so many different ways to to to, to address the magnetic field and uh, allow me to go even more and get even more nebulous. 
I'm going to tell you something. When I was a young person, the easiest way to not get what you want is to constantly act like you chasing it. And I, I remember that it was like a cultural practice of going outside. When you go outside, this before phones was out. And the brothers that I'm 49, this brother's my age, a little older, whatever. They'll tell you before dudes have phones, they go outside with a pen in their pocket and pieces of paper. And they go like this. Every time they see a female, they ask, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? It's like your neck be broke. You like this. Every time you turn around, you like this. You saying, you looking at, ooh, look at that, look at that. You become a looky loo. You're looking everywhere. You're the reason why they got you, they call you rubber neck. That's what happened. Nosy people be driving, rubber naked. They're looking at accidents and causing a bunch of stoppage and slow stuff in there. It's the same thing with manifesting. You think that you're going to manifest and bring towards what you want in the light of day, you're bugging. It's almost like saying that you want to use a candle to help you on a court case. That's not unfounded. But who sits up and watches the candle burn all night and don't get no rest? impossible so magnetic fields are in place already that are here to be manipulated and one of the most significant forces of the magnet is this when you was little you know this is the favorite part of the magnet is when they go against each other bro in fact if you turn yourself into one of the magnets and you have something to do and you want to go somewhere in life, you're going to have to transform your magnet where you actively acknowledge where you are, what you don't want, what you used to want, and transform your magnet in such a way where you repel the shit that you don't want and the shit that you don't need and you to lies the magnetic push away to a new trajectory. Now, that don't mean that you got to stop dealing with the humans that you love. You don't have to sacrifice the love you have to find a love that you that 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 is yet to be discovered. But if you do want to obtain something, there's some things that you have to abstain from. Obtainment is through acknowledgement of that which is to be abstained from. If you want to obtain uh, awesome and amazing and a beautiful relationship with people that you love while you human, and that's a, an amazing goddamn um achievement to for one to want to have is to be loved and to be understood and in the company of love and wisdom now one of the things that's required for that though however is for you to concentrate on that which you want and not that which you don't want and a lot of us think magneti magnetizing something into your life beneficial is you constantly thinking about the very thing that you don't want. You think by concentrating on what you don't want that somehow you're going to build the wherewithal to magnetically bring into existence the things that you require. And it's not that that's not the case. You, you have to divorce yourself from acknowledging limitations. And a lot of y'all, It's very difficult speaking to African American sometimes because you almost have to debase yourself, brother and sister. You got to go put on a space suit 
and call it the hood. I'm down with the hood um, type, type shit. Feel me? You got to talk like this and all that just to reach your folks. And I don't know how that stands to serve us where for years, I remember this. If you was intelligent, people was making you look like you was a sucker. Dudes questioning all type of shit about your, your, your reality. If you just a little too smart, nigga, you're weird ass. How they do you, you see? So this should be an indicator for you. A lot of you want to make things manifest, but you have forgotten the first law of occultism or you never knew it. That you're not supposed to be telling everybody your ambitions and the shit that you you got to show and prove. You ain't, you ain't here to be sitting up running your mouth. The tongue tell the teeth what to do. The tongue is a magnetic device. The tongue is a magnetic device and so are you. Your liver is a magnetic device. Your heart is a magnetic device. You are a magnet. When you walk on top of that concrete though, your whole life wearing sneakers, you wondering why a lot of people can't manifest certain stuff. You niggas don't wear hard bottom shoes, man. You ain't never had a wood shoe, bro. And you think you think you you forget the utility of reality. I got a good Ferragamo. Let me want to do a play. Let me want to let me want to really manifest something, son. I'm putting my shoes on. I promise you. How you gonna manifest in a magnetic world? And you running around with rubbers on rubber rubber what you call it? Um, uh, at the bottom of your um. Your sneakers, your whole life. Ask somebody, it's somebody up here right now that think they know more than us, that know everything. It's a nigga right now think he got everything more than us. That nigga, when the last time he went in the backyard, took his socks off and walked on a lawn, on the grass, and mm. asked the universe for something. Wow. Before you go make an announcement on the internet and start telling your friends what you want and what you is and what you're doing and all that, go outside at nighttime, take your shoes off, plant your feet in the grass and look up at the sky and be and, and stop acting like you lonely. Stop acting like you lonely. There's a blade of grass speaking to you right there. You heard? You feel me? Yeah. I tell people we're in a community. We're in a vast community. The community is the evidence of the community is in our magnetic fields. You heard? So now we notice that every culture, when we spoke about our light skinned Caucasian folks, you know, and about the magnetic field, we wasn't trying to. Um, make them feel no kind of way. We're not here to make people feel bad about nothing. We're trying to empower people so they can know who we are. It's in the Quran. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that he has created man in different expressions so not that one may be better than the other, but so that they might know one another. So you can tell when a people have improved their magnetic field. They start getting darker, yeah? But you can tell when we, when we have been negatively affected by the na- magnetic field, I don't care how dark you is, niggas start getting a gray hue to them, yeah? Too much alcohol, too much orgasm, too much, too much um, staying up all night, yeah? Too much smoking, not enough um, uh, um, hydration. You gonna start getting a dull hue to you, bro. You're that Vaseline and none of that cocoa butter, shea butter. She gonna bring that back, Jack. I'm telling you, for real, for real. That's facts, so, man. You you drop you dropped it tonight, man. I I like this 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 flow you got going on, man. The people really enjoy, we really enjoyed it, man. It was like story time with A.A. Rashid, man. 
That's a good one because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't eat today. I have not eaten yet, so my magnetic field is of service to the people, and Thanks I appreciate you. them. I appreciate your ear and your listening audience, and I and shout out to the people who know about my website. That's my son dot com. I got Indeed. one of the most illest names of a website, and we got material up there right now. We have the book. We have books, rather. We have digital books as well as physical books, as well as art that goes with the books as well. You know, right, for real. Right. Shout out, shout out to, um, shout out to everybody in our immediate circle, man, and all the beautiful family down in Atlanta. I can't wait mm-hmm. to come uh, see y'all. And this time, Rich, hold me to this, man. Yeah. I'm coming up there on the mountain, man. Woo! I got to come up there on the mountain top. Talking all this magnetic field shit yeah. tonight. Hey, hey, if you don't get your magnetic field ass up on this mountain, <laughs> 6 30 in the morning with us, yeah. Man, so listen. Go. Man. Hold me to that. For oh, real. Yeah. Nah, I, I definitely. And I'm going to be up there with Blue Pill with the gold water doing push ups. <laughs> That's what's up. Get That's what's up, right. man. Uh, yeah, I, and then I heard, I heard you like a, 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 a conscious party promoter or something. <laughs> they said yeah, that I, I got, just the yo, new like you making the the people feel good now. You know, we've yeah, acquired it, all this this stuff now. When do we celebrate, kind of thing? I'm feeling a, this, bro. It's Club Three Six Three. That's the new movement. Come on, Club, man. Club, Club Three Six Three. <laughs> Come on, man. You a co legend for that. Gotta have you up in there, man. Hey, 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 tell the people um anything else you got going on where they can support you or or anything else you want them to know before you get out of here, my brother. Well, I'ma let them know that I'ma be in what you call it in Chicago. Um the first week of April. I'm on the radio. Yeah, I'm on the show now. That's all right. I'll call you right back when I get over. All right. So we going to Chicago. Can you still hear me, Rich? Yeah, yeah. You, you're still good. You're still good. Okay. So we're going to Chicago, and we're doing a pop-up. Um, we also celebrating, um, uh, 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 you know, it's like, it's like, you know, Chicago's a very special place for me. I was born there, and you know, this is the 10th year of my mother's passing, you know? And, you know, it's a lot of people that still have their parents and, you know, shout out to you. I hope you really enjoy the time that you have with your parents and, and your folks. Cause I miss my mama every day, bro. You know? Yeah, I feel you. So I feel you. Same one here, thing brother. That I'm giving to myself is I'm going to do some <clears> teaching <throat> down here in Chicago. And I'm bringing some of my um, <clears throat> some of my art and my new iterations. Concentrate more on visual art as it um, as it expresses itself, you know, uh, through my books and you know my way of thinking. And I'm adding value to the people because my visual art is going to be highly coveted and and sought after, bro, for real. And I'm leaving enough space in the secondary market for people to resell stuff. And in the future, in the future, I'm telling you, with um, what that's the, the 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 great value of the Americas is the fact that we encapsulate experiences within items, things that can be utilized as uh, current, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. in the event that the little greenbacks, you know, disappear, there's somebody that finds a great value in a DVD in a VHS tape, in a picture. And they'll mm. trade food for that. You feel me? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mind is powerful and it's a beautiful thing. And um, my cash app too is amazing. Yeah, I just put it on the screen. It, what is it? It's A.A. Rashid Art, right? Yes, sir. It is. Okay. Yeah, I got so family. I got the brother. Um, if you want to support the brother, the brother's cash app. Thank you to Gerald Hodges Jr. for putting that on. Um, in the thank chat. You, yeah, thank you. It's dollar sign A A Rashid Art. All right, that's his cash app. Show the brother some love. The brother's always coming through. 
and uh, dropping uh, dropping some knowledge, dropping some wisdom on the family. So definitely appreciate that. Hey, I definitely appreciate the maturity in your um, you know, in your teachings. I can see the maturity, and uh, I look forward to the Stone Mountain trip, man. I definitely look forward to that, man. I'm I'm, I'm down with it, man, and I look forward to. Given instruction in Atlanta is um, a propitious area for me. I do great work there. You know, it's very kind to me. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Career. And I appreciate you as usual. Thank you, King. And I don't want to hold you. Enjoy the remainder of your night. I'm going to break me some bread and, um, you know, light me some reason <clears throat> right now, man. Get right, Jack. I don't want to do it in front of everybody, though. And uh, we yeah, before we get out of here, hey, I gotta talk to you in the near future too, so you can make an appearance at Club Three Six Three. We need to get you on stage because I oh, got some. Uh, yeah, let's get that soccer. Got, shit. Yeah, got, you, know, got, you got that money, man. Got it. We you rich, pop. I'm we, telling you, <laughs> we we go get AA out here at the Club Three Six Three. Shout out also um to the brothers uh, Bashir. That's um Keys brother, nineteen Keys brother. I seen him in the chat. I actually went to Bashir's um very talented artist. Well. Very talented. I went to his album listening party um when Keys was in Atlanta for something and they had an after party and yeah. I went to Bashir's joint. It was off the hook. He had the live band there and all that. Shit was shit was dope. It was dope. So shout out to Bashir. He's Gotta a get him there. Effortless. Effortless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Hey, with that being said, family, tomorrow come back nine o'clock. I'm gonna have Flabrun. The sister Flabrun on here. Uh, we're gonna have a great galactic discussion. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank the brother A. Rashid. Thank you to the chat, and we are signing out, family. Peace, everybody. Peace and love.